Mr. Murphy repeatedly demands similar evidence, such as he thinks he has found with the Lemba, for the Israelite ancestry of Native Americans, while failing to disclose that the Cohen modal haplotype is the only known haplotype with a presumptive origin in ancient Israel, demonstrating significant homogeneity among Jewish populations worldwide. Jewish DNA researcher Dr. Ken Jacobs stated, the only Jewish subgroup that does show so homogeneity, descendants of the Kohenim, or priestly class, makes up only about 2% of the Jewish population. Even within the Kohenim, and certainly within the rest of the Jewish people, there's a vast amount of genetic variation. In view of the lack of a single validated CMH-like haplotype among modern Jews relevant to non-Cohen Israelites, it seems that Mr. Murphy has contrived a fool's errand for Book of Mormon believers. Although critics have claimed that Native Americans and modern Jews share no relevant Y-chromosome affinities, recent data have proven such statements resoundingly false. Douglas Forbes points out that Y-chromosome SNP biallelic marker QP36, also known by the mutation marker M242, postulated by Behar and colleagues to be a founding lineage group among Ashkenazi Jews, is also present in Iranian and Iraqi Jews, and is a founding lineage present in 31% of self-identified Native Americans in the U.S. A branch of the QP36 lineage, M323, is also found in Yemenite Jews. The QP36 lineage is ancestral to the QM3 mutation group. The QP36 and QM3 lineages together, haplogroup Q, are found in over 76% of Native Americans. Douglas Forbes further writes, <coughs> We find M242, another name for QP36, scattered all over central Eurasia and concentrated in Turkestan, just north of Iran. The 10 tribes were taken captive to Media, northwest Iran. So M242 is found scattered just where you would expect it to be if legends of the 10 tribes is escaping captivity by going north are true. While the ethno-history behind these variations remains to be elucidated, these intriguing findings produce considerable difficulty for critics' arguments. The finding of two dominant Y-chromosome haplotypes among Native Americans is fully consistent with traditional LDS views of Lehi and Ishmael representing the principal male ancestors of Native Americans, with Zoram and the Mulekites contributing minor lineages. The discovery of a founding Y chromosome haplotype lineage present at very high frequency in Native American populations corresponding to a founding lineage group present in Jewish populations worldwide demonstrates remarkable consistency with the Book of Mormon account. Douglas Forbes further writes, other West Eurasian lineages found in Native American test subjects include R, E3B, J, F, G, and I. All of these are also found in modern Jews. The question of which of these latter lineages are pre-Columbian and which may represent post-Columbian admixture has not been definitively resolved and will require further research. <coughs> Some widespread Jewish Y chromosome affinities represent recent post-diaspora influences. Geneticist Doran Behar and colleagues report, the Levites and other paternally inherited Jewish castes display evidence for multiple recent origins, with Ashkenazi Levites having a high frequency of a distinctive non-Near Eastern haplogroup. The Ashkenazi Levite microsatellite haplotypes within this haplogroup are extremely tightly clustered with an inferred common ancestor within the past 2,000 years. A founding event likely involving one or very few European men occurring at a time close to the initial formation and settlement of the Ashkenazi community is the most likely explanation for the presence of this distinctive haplogroup found today in greater than 50% of Ashkenazi Levites. Bradman, Rosengarten, and Skretsky, right? Comparisons of the Ashkenazi Levite data set with other groups studied suggest that Y chromosome haplotypes present at high frequency in Ashkenazi Levites are most likely to have an East European or West Asian origin and not to have originated in the Middle East. David Keyes writes that the Ashkenazi Levite marker was most likely introduced into the Jewish population with the mass conversion of Turkic Khazars between 700 and 900 AD. Genetic evidence of presumably non-Israelite origins for many of today's Jews highlights the fallacy of using modern Jewish genetics as a definitive standard against which claims of Israelite ancestry for other groups are assessed. Certain Y chromosome haplotypes have been identified frequently among modern Jews and Near Eastern Arabs. These haplotypes, some claim, represent markers for regional affiliation to the Near East. 
The absence of many of these haplotypes in Native Americans have led some to claim that traditional LDS views of an Israelite ancestry for Native Americans are false. Michael Hammer reports that Jewish and, and non-Jewish Middle Eastern populations share similar frequencies of certain Y chromosome haplotypes. However, he cautions many of the same haplotypes present in Jewish and Middle Eastern populations were also present in samples from Europe, although at varying frequencies. Most so-called regional affiliation haplotypes are present in only a fraction of modern Near Eastern peoples. <clears throat> these haplotypes are neither inclusive, that is, not all modern Near Easterners share these markers, nor exclusive in that their absence does not preclude an origin in ancient Israel or elsewhere in the Near East. Studies of modern Near Eastern groups like Armenians reveal, in many cases, a strong regional structure as the result of a relatively high degree of genetic isolation, even within single ethno-national groups. The vast regional differences seen within the Near East today defy the assumption that a few generic haplogroups or haplotypes can definitively rule in or out a historic origin anywhere within an eth ethnically heterogeneous region that has been home to many diverse cultures. Simplistic claims that an Israelite ancestry for non-Jewish groups can be ruled in or out based on so-called regional affiliation haplotypes fail to account for known ethnohistoric dynamics. The question of what these haplotypes represent in the ethnohistory of modern peoples, when they were introduced and where they came from, have not even begun to be answered. Hebrew University geneticist Howard Cedar stated, researchers still don't know what the history is behind the variations. As a result, it is difficult to draw conclusions about genetic affinity. Many of the haplotypes shared among modern Jews and Palestinians may represent genetic materials assimilated over centuries of intermarriage rather than genuine Israelite DNA, as not one of these haplotypes has been demonstrated to have been prevalent in Israelite populations before the Babylonian captivity. <coughs> Dr. John Butler has pointed out an Icelandic study that found that the mtDNA and Y chromosome haplotypes of many known ancestors were not detectable in a modern population just over a century later. The study traced the genealogy of over 131,000 modern Icelanders back to ancestors born between 1848 and 1892 and between 1742 and 1798. The authors report that the population-wide coalescent analysis of Icelandic genealogies revealed highly positively skewed distributions of descendants to ancestors, with the vast majority of potential ancestors contributing one or no descendants, and a minority of ancestors contributing large numbers of descendants. They observed that this has caused considerable fluctuation in the frequencies of mtDNA and Y chromosome haplotypes, despite rapid population expansion in Iceland during the past 300 years. 86% of modern Icelandic males descend from just 26% of potential male ancestors born between 1848 and 1892. Women demonstrate even more dramatic trends due to the shorter female intergenerational time. 91.7% of modern Icelandic females descend from just 22% of potential female ancestors born between the same years. This study documents that dramatic shifts in haplotype prevalence can occur and that genetic evidence for many known ancestors is entirely lost in an advanced, peaceful, relatively isolated society over the course of little more than a century. It also cautions against drawing sweeping conc ethnohistoric conclusions about haplotypes present in many different groups based exclusively on their prevalence in modern societies. One can appreciate the lack of any scientific basis for critics' demands that groups facing frequent episodes of war, persecution, famine, and disease, while experiencing ongoing intermarriage with other groups, should maintain strong haplotype commonalities over 2,600 years of separation. Critic Thomas Murphy writes, genetic data repeatedly point to migrations from Asia between 7,000 and 50,000 years ago. He further writes, uh, sorry, uh, as the primary source of Native American origins. He further writes, Asian origin is clearly indicated. Yet mitochondrial DNA researcher, Dr. D. Andrew Merriweather wrote, we conclude that Mongolia or a geographic location common to both contemporary Mongolians and American aboriginals is the more likely origin of the founders of the New World. While ignored by Mr. Murphy and other critics, the possibility of an outside geographic origin common to both contemporary Mongolians and American aboriginals is allowed by the original researchers. The only compelling genetic validation that the ancient inhabitants of an area are ancestors or close relatives of modern peoples can come from comparisons of ancient and modern DNA. 
Studies of ancient New World DNA have demonstrated that, that the early inhabitants of the New World appear to have had all of the four main mtDNA haplogroups, A, B, C, and D, prevalent in modern Native Americans, supporting the belief that ancient Native Americans are in fact the ancestors of the present ones.